What happens if a diabetic takes spirulina for one month? Hello everyone, if you are looking for exclusive deals, blogs, educational content every week delivered to your email, subscribe to our newsletter at sugarmds.com right now. Now, spirulina is a type of algae that is rich in nutrients, guys. Spirulina is a type of blue-green algae that grows in both salt and fresh water. It may be one of the most nutrient-dense foods on Earth. It's often used as a dietary supplement or as a natural food coloring. Well, no, I don't sell that one. But this one, you have to get them from somewhere else. Yet, I'll tell you all the benefits of spirulina here. It contains high levels of protein, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. The main active compound in spirulina is phycocyanin. Now, phycocyanin is a blue pigment that gives spirulina it is characteristic color. This pigment actually has powerful antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties, which as a diabetic, you know you need that, right? Now, spirulina has been shown to protect cells from damage caused by oxidative stress. Again, happens a lot with diabetes. It also helps to reduce the inflammation throughout your body. Now, these properties make spirulina an ideal supplement, again, for diabetics or even for people with insulin resistance, right? Uh, or people who are looking to improve their overall health. Now, number one, some evidence actually suggests that spirulina may benefit people with type 2 diabetes. They've studied that. So what they found was it was reducing the fasting blood sugar levels. In one study, for example, participants who took uh, spirulina supplements for three months had significantly lower fasting blood sugar levels than those who did not take spirulina. So it may actually help with improving your insulin sensitivity. Now, insulin sensitivity, as you know, is the key for body's ability to use insulin efficiently, and people with insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes are typically are less sensitive to insulin, which can lead to high blood sugar and so forth. But when you use spirulina, it can actually really help to improve that insulin sensitivity and improve the blood sugar control in pretty much every type 2 diabetic. Now, we know that we need more research on this, but so far, spirulina appears to be safe and effective way to lower your blood sugar levels, especially if you have uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. Now, number two, it gives you strength and endurance. So if you're looking for a way to boost your workout performance, you may actually want to consider spirulina. Now, of course, a lot of people will have an excuse for not exercising because they're tired and so forth. But when you use spirulina, what it does, it reduces the oxidative damage, which is the contributor to your fatigue. Now, studies have shown that spirulina, due to its antioxidant features, can enhance the endurance and increase the muscle strength. So, it may help reduce the exercise and to fatigue as well, which will help you to go exercise again, right? So if you're looking for an edge in your workout, you're already active, you can also consider adding spirulina to your supplement regimen. Number three, it can help control your allergies. If you're one of those many people who suffer from seasonal allergies, you know how frustrating it can be to deal with the, the, the sneezing, the itching, the coughing. Especially with this COVID going on, everybody thinks that you have COVID just because you have allergies, right? It's, it's miserable. But there's hope there. So a new study found that spirulina supplements are very effective against allergic rhinitis and reduces the symptoms dramatically. The study, which was conducted at a veterans hospital actually in Taiwan, they looked at the effect of spirulina on a group of patients with seasonal allergies. Patients were given spirulina supplements for eight weeks. And at the end of the study, they found that these supplements had significantly reduced the symptoms of allergic rhinitis. They even looked at the uh, inflammation levels or markers, for example, IgE, which is a type of antibody that is associated with these allergies, and they found that they were lower in this study group as well. So if you're really looking for a natural way to relieve your seasonal allergy symptoms, I would say try spirulina for that purpose as well. Number four, it will help lower the blood pressure. Now, some studies have shown that actually spirulina may help lower blood pressure levels as you know, 
it is a major risk factor for many problems like heart attacks and stroke. Now, it is unclear whether a high dose of spirulina would have any even better effect on the blood pressure, but uh, researchers decided to investigate this anyways. And what they did was they divided participants into two groups. Now, one group received a high dose of spirulina, and the other group received a placebo. The results showed that the group who took spirulina actually had significantly lower blood pressure levels than the placebo group. Now, this suggests that a higher dose of spirulina may be effective in reducing your blood pressure levels. Number five, it will reduce the risk of oral cancer, which is fairly common actually. The spirulina has been shown to have anti-cancer properties, especially in this one. Spirulina was found to be uh, very effective against a type of oral cancer or actually precancerous lesion in the mouth. Again, that's good news for people who are looking natural ways to prevent cancer. I'm not saying it will prevent all the cancers, but at least it's been shown to reduce the oral cancer as well. Overall, it's a safe and effective supplement. Uh, as you know, as you can see, it can offer even protection against some cancers. It even lowers your triglyceride levels and even your bad LDL cholesterol levels. Also, it stimulates your good cholesterol levels like HDL. So there's so many benefits of taking spirulina. That is, uh, you know, HDL going up and LDL going down is extremely important because as you know, diabetes is almost equal to having heart disease. Not everybody will have heart disease, but is it increases your risk by four or five times compared to someone who does not have diabetes. Number six, it protects even bad cholesterol from oxidation, which happens, you know, in the development of heart disease, you know, because it protects your LDL from oxidation, LDL cholesterol is not going to harm you even if it is high because for LDL to hurt you or to build up in your arteries, it has to be oxidized. Now, and then when you're reducing the oxidation, then you're actually reducing the harmful effects of LDL. Now, when LDL comes in contact with free radicals, that's when the oxidation happens and these unstable molecules basically accumulate in your arteries and there you go, now you have arteriosclerosis. Antioxidants neutralize as free radicals, preventing them from causing damage to begin with. So spirulina is thought to be a powerful antioxidant and it may help protect the LDL cholesterol from becoming oxidized and that can protect you from heart disease as well. Now, spirulina really promotes heart health also by reducing the blood pressure and inflammation as we discussed, but we need more research definitely. We always recommend more research because the research means that it's repeatable and it's more scientific if there's more research about it. It may never be a medication, it will never be a drug, so don't expect that. But if you're interested to give it a try to Spirulino, I would recommend it, and we want to hear your feedback on that as well. And if you haven't tried our supplements, which are great for most diabetics for many reasons, go to sugarmds.com, check them out. You will not regret it. So subscribe and save. I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.